Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you for um, subscribing to my channel and having an interest in, in the things that I do in my studio. And I thought I would just tell you a little bit about myself today, just because I, I haven't really um, done any videos that give you any of my background. But I've been an artist for over 30 years and, you know, worked in a lot of different studios. Um, usually they were in my home. This is the first time in a studio that I'm actually renting. And I didn't always start out as an artist. I always wanted to be one. But the way life was, I, um, I pursued a, a career in biochemistry first. And after going through four years of college in Wisconsin, by the time I was a senior, I realized it wasn't a good fit for me. And that was in 1983. And from that point on, I found myself wanting to do something that was definitely with the arts. And so I started to pursue painting. And so for a long time, I worked in watercolor. In fact, I did that for 20 years. And in that amount of time, I see the interesting thing that happened was that after going through four years of a really rigorous kind of science academic education, it really helped me to learn how to educate myself. So I hear a lot of artists out there, they're concerned that they're self-taught, and I get it. I also felt that way. I, um, I tried to get every book I could on watercolor when I really didn't know much about it at all. And I must have had 50, 60, 70 books that I just focused on and tried to teach myself, and I got pretty far. But the way it was, I after 20 years and becoming more involved with the Montana Watercolor Society and I was president for a little while and I was vice president for a bit of time. You know, I sold work and was in galleries and things like that, but I felt like something was really missing in my work and I couldn't quite identify what it was. Up until that point, I really felt like what I was after was work that was beautiful because growing up, that's what I was sort of led to believe that art that was beautiful was worthy and art that wasn't of pretty flowers and landscapes was not valid. So I had to overcome that, that sort of ingrained notion of what art was all about. So fast forward, um, I have two children and they're now grown. When they grew up though, I decided to go back to school and I thought, well, they're gone. They're off to, to do their thing. So it's my chance to now go and pursue a, a more in-depth understanding of what art was all about. And the first thing I did was I, uh, living in Montana, I went to the University um, of Montana and I um, started to take a few classes. This is in 2006. I was so excited to be a student again. I was in my mid-40s. It was a little strange because I was one of the older students for sure on this campus, but it felt really, really good to be back in classes, this time classes that I really loved. The first class I took, or one of the first classes I took, was Art History 1 and 2. Those are the two classes that really, really, uh, I'd say, changed the way I looked at art um, till this day, and also made me want to go and pursue an MFA, which at the time... That wasn't why I'd gone back to school. The reason I went back to school was because I wanted to fill in these holes in my past where I felt like, you know, something's missing. I don't know what it is. And so when I went through art history, I guess what became very evident very quickly was art is part of who we are. It's not just pretty pictures. Way back in the time, time of the, the cave drawings and paintings I mean it was done as a form of communication and these people who wrote on cave walls had almost no materials but um, they were trying to document you know how to hunt their game and how to survive and everything that they did was really part of survival and it was um, very inspirational to me to see that no matter where we are in history art and history, art and life, art and everything, they coincide, they communicate. So art is a reflection of what's going on in society, in civilization, in an individual sense. I think every artist feels that 
of course, they want their art to speak of who they are. And that's where, that's where it becomes challenging and sometimes difficult to find yourself. And so after I went through the graduate program, got my MFA in 2010, you know, I, I felt like, I just remember feeling really happy. I had accomplished something. And, and by the way, I didn't take a single painting class between 2008 and 10 when I was working toward my MFA. My thesis exhibition was actually more science-based, or at least it was about the psychology of fear as it related to terrorism. And so I didn't really feel like I could paint that type of content, but I did feel like installations, photography, printmaking, all kinds of other things would help me to better convey what I was trying to say. And so there is a link on my my current website, thepamelacoey.com, that talks about disquietude. That was my thesis work. And I had um, roughly 2,700 square feet to fill, so three galleries. And one of the last exhibitions that I put together that referenced science, which was part of my past. And so every now and then, yeah, it trickles forth and, and comes out into the work I do now. But right now, I think the way I look at it is the, the more science-heavy exhibitions I did in the past. They, were, they served their purpose. I'm pleased with them. There was a lot of content there that I had to think about. I had to think about what is the best way to convey what I'm trying to say. But as you can see, I'm now um, I'm painting and I'm, I'm painting full time and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm trying to paint larger scale work. I'm trying to continue to experiment, push boundaries, try things I haven't done before because that for me is what keeps my art alive and interesting and fun. And I've already been in that place where art became really, really hard and boring. And I felt like at the end of those watercolor days that I could not paint another pretty floral or I would just go crazy. And actually I did stop painting for 10 years at that time. So I found that the best way for me to avoid that is to keep things really changing in my studio. And that's where I am right now. I just, I'm really, really grateful to have, you know, all of you who are interested in what I do. A little, little thing about YouTube is that I actually started that first video I did kind of as just a, an experiment with my new iPhone. I saw this video button and I didn't know what it was for. So I set it up. I don't know if I even had a tripod. I probably didn't, but I did a time-lapse video and I videotaped myself painting in cold wax and oil on a sheet of paper. When I played it back, I found it to be really entertaining. And I thought, oh, well, what happens if I, you know, record myself working on a larger painting? What would that be like? So I did it. And I found that when I played the video back, I learned about myself, things that I was doing that I didn't even realize I was doing. So just so that you know, I actually use the videos that I create as my way of trying to figure out what it is I'm actually doing. I kind of spying on myself, I think. And I, I love sharing this information with you. They do take a lot of time to create. My longest editing, which made me really appreciate those people who work in the movie industry, was I had probably eight hours of uh, footage and I was trying to condense it down into three minutes and it took me about 11 hours. I've gotten a lot faster now, but just so you know, that's why there's time in between the YouTube videos because they do take time. And I, I like to feel like when I produce a YouTube video that it's a reflection of me. It's sort of like a piece of art for me, even though it's I'm not good at it. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely an amateur, uh, but I don't want to just put out something that I don't feel good about. So I just wanted to let you know that being an artist has so many challenges and struggles, and I don't think it matters how long you've been painting. A beginner, intermediate, advanced artist are all going to have similar issues. Um, at some point, you may become more confident about what you're doing, but if you're pushing boundaries, you're always going to feel a little bit, you know, uncomfortable and unsure of yourself. And, and that's at least where I am all the time. I always look at myself as a beginner when I start something new because I am a beginner. I'm trying something I haven't done before. Therefore, I may have some technical information that I can rely on, but 
The rest is relying on my intuition and my understanding, uh, my knowledge of you know, what makes a painting strong. And it is this type of information and, and the kinds of things that I've encountered over the last 30 years of be, being an artist that I'd like to share with you on this new website. And so I'm introducing you to this new website with the hope that you will take a look and just become familiar with it. There's not a whole lot of content there now, but you'll see a form on the home page. And if you fill in that form, um, you will instantly get a free guide of my five favorite studio tools that I have in my studio at all times. And each of the tools you can get for under $20. So that's just a little thank you for taking a visit to my website and then letting me know that, that you might be interested in future content. My hope is that future content will include online courses. Um, I work in four mediums, so cold wax and oil, encaustic, encaustic monotype, and acrylic mixed media. I love doing workshops in person, but I've gotten comments from people who are, well, why won't you come where I am? Or they want to do a mentorship with me and my schedule won't allow it. And I think this new website, artandsuccess.com, is going to help me to share the information that I know and that I've learned over the course of a lifetime. It'll just become a place where you can go and hopefully get some inspiration. If you'd like to uh, take a course, then you'll be able to do that as well. But right now, it's, um, it's all just beginning, and so I wanted to let you know. So with that, thanks for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful time in your studio. Bye.